Hi, sixth grade saxophonist. My name is Mr. Stivers. I'm the band director here at Crosby Middle School, and I'm here to help you with your sixth grade audition music for the 2016 JCPS All County Band. So, uh, the first portion of this, when you go in for your audition, your judge will ask you to play the concert B flat scale, which is on the top of your audition music. The tempo marking for that is at 108. So, if you have a metronome, uh, go on and set it at 108. If for you the concert B flat scale is something new, uh, what you can do is slow down the tempo and work on uh, bumping it up a little bit. So uh, here's the tempo at 80 beat per minute. The tempo that's called for is 108. Okay. So if we look at our key signature, make sure that F sharp is the F that we use, not F natural. So starting on the G, here we go. One, two, ready. <laughs> A good thing that I like to challenge my students to do is to sing that scale and then play it back and it just helps develop the ear to play more in tune. Uh, and if you have a tuner, maybe using that per note just to check how you're doing. Here is the correct tempo, 108. A metronome will not be provided when you're auditioning, so just kind of, if you, the more you work with it, the more familiar you become with the appropriate tempo. So here we go. Concert B-flat scale again at 108. One, two, ready. <laughs> So without further ado, let's let's tackle the, the nuts and bolts of your audition here, which is the etude, okay? So uh, once again, we're in the key of concert B-flat. The suggested tempos for you are anyway for anywhere from 96 beat per minute to 104. So again, if this is your first time really working with someone uh, on this piece other than your band director, uh, we're going to start a little bit slower than what's called for just so we can get this down. First thing I am going to do is actually play through it. So all I want you to do is keep your eyes on the music as I play through the excerpt. This tempo is 72 beats per minute. So now that I've played through it, let's just kind of break it down a little bit, okay? The first thing I want you to do is get your pencil if you've got one. You can hit pause anytime during this video if you need to get some resources I'm asking for. And the first thing I would do is most definitely circle the key signature, which is F sharp, and it carries through uh, throughout the whole piece. The second thing I would do is maybe if you like to highlight to indicate things that are important are your dynamics and articulations. And I'm just going to say some of the dynamics as we go forward. So the first that I would highlight is that MF, which stands for mezzo forte, meaning medium loud. So we don't want to start the piece quite as loud as it's going to get. Measure two, you have this marking, and it's a gradual crescendo. So that's a crescendo marking, meaning to gradually get louder so we can get to that forte. So I would highlight that. Also in bar two, on beat three, you have B, 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 C, you have an accent marking. So I will make sure to highlight that as being important. If you skip to the last measure in line one, which is measure four, you have a day crescendo going back to where we started at mezzo forte. Line two starts at a forte dynamic, meaning loud. You also have accents on the dotted quarter. You have accents in the second bar of line two on that dotted quarter E. And then we close the piece on a mezzo piano, meaning medium soft. Okay, so if we kind of did a, a funny visual here of the way the piece goes, it's medium loud to forte, back down to mezzo forte. The second line starts up here forte, right? And then we immediately drop down to that mezzo piano as we finish. Okay, so if you think about the variations of loudness and softness to the piece, that's going to help you when you're preparing for this. Okay, let's look at the first measure. 
Some of you in your sixth grade band book may have been learning about the dotted quarter. Okay, So the dotted quarter has a total of three eighth notes in that single dotted quarter. Here's an activity I, I have my students do when learning that rhythm. The first is that we count it out. So um, counted by itself would be one and three and four and. So with the pencil, if you want to write that in, one and three and four and. Okay. Another exercise I have after we count what will be heard is that we do a subdividing activity, and it would look like this while we clap. One and two and three and four and. Did you notice that when I counted the dotted quarter, it was one and two before we went to the next notation under the E? So again, one and two and three and four and. You'll see that rhythm occur with different notes on, guess what, line two of measure one. So line two on the G in the F sharp, F sharp, E, D. An exercise after we've counted it, subdivided it and clapped and count, is we play the subdivision within that dotted quarter. Let me model for you. So I play the three Ds within that dotted quarter. I could do the same on line two. So let's try that. Ready and go. So there are the occurrences of the dotted quarter and the eighth. Another system uh, some of my colleagues like to use is the down-up system. So rhythm-wise, let's just isolate measure one, and it would go like this. With your toe tapping every down, it has an up. But think of it like an eighth note. Down, up, down, up, one, and two, and. So it would go like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Again. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So those of you who like to tap your toe to help keep rhythm, I asked you to do this. My band director taught me this trick. Think of your big toe in your shoe just tapping. Because you don't want to go to your audition where uh, you're going to be tapping so loud that your judge can hear that. So just think of your big toe tapping in your shoe, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up. All right. Okay, let's talk about when we get to the accent in measure two. Okay? An accent means to attack a note louder. Now, we being a reed player, right, our tongue is to touch this portion between the reed and where the mouthpiece meet. Now, the question is, what part of the tongue do we use? It's not the tip of the tongue. I'm going to ask you to do this. Put the saxophone in your mouth, as is, right? So you're rolling that bottom lip and your teeth are on top. When I put the saxophone in my mouth without even playing a single note, a portion of my tongue, not the tip, right, is already touching right here. That's the part of the tongue we want to touch to articulate. Make that sound with me, just on our open C sharp. Those are up to eighth notes, right? Add air to vibrate the reed so we get sound. Let's see clarity when using our tongue. So an accent means that we're going to be a little more forceful. So you're not smacking the reed per se, but you're applying a little more um, assertion with air. Listen to what bar two sounds like when we get to the accent. It's on beat three. Ready and go. And we also have a crescendo marking to get there. Okay, listen again. Something I would do, because even though you're sixth grade, you can do this, is to not breathe until you get the end of line one. You can do that whole thing. You don't want to interrupt your nice crescendo with a breath and sound like this. Okay, I tell my kids, don't take a Grand Canyon breath right there. No breath at all. A phrase is typically four bars. So what I would ask you to do is take your pencil, and I want you to draw an arrow above measure two and three where they connect, and just that arrow indicates that, hey, I'm not supposed to breathe here. Okay? You have accents, while we're on the topic of accents, on that second line on the dotted quarters. So again, a little more assertion with uh, air behind the tongue. Then you can take the breath there before mezzo piano. Some of you, uh, as you play this, if you're like my students, the slurs might get you. Okay, so I would lightly circle anytime we have a slur, and a slur is that curved line connecting notes 
that are different, okay? So when you play those, make sure you're not using the tongue on the individual eighth notes, only the first grouping. So let me uh, sing a syllable I teach my kids to do. Ta, ta, ti, a, ti, ti, say that ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, a, ti, 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 a. We start the tongue, but then it's slurred to the next. So what I'd like to do is you get your saxophone and we're going to play the whole thing at 72 beats per minute. Ready? One, two, ready. My sixth grade saxophonists have expressed that the most challenging thing can maybe be a combination of the slurs and the accents, but the second to last measure have what we call an arpeggiation. Arpeggio means that instead of going do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, steps, whether that's up or down, it has leaps. So syllable-wise, right, we're starting on the syllable re. So re, mi, fa, sol. Well, hey, Mr. Stivers, going up to la. Those are all steps, right? But then after that E, instead of going what feels natural down to D, right, we go to C and then A. So what I would do is put the metronome on slow. Here's 58 beat per minute. Just move the buttons the last two measures. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, C, A, G, B, A, G. Again, move the buttons. A, B, C, D, E, C, A, G, A, B, G. And then play over and over and gradually take the tempo up. Don't go right to that 104. Ready? Last two measures. Here we go. Play. Okay, so the last step before we close out, if you've been playing along, and you, again, you can hit pause anytime during this video. So we're at almost 13 minutes on this video if you just want to refresh your memory so you can play along. But the tempo here is 108 from the top. One, three, one. I wish all of you the best of luck, and um, if you don't make it this year, uh, at least you're going for the experience of it to where you can prepare for this for 7th and 8th grade. But again, we wish all of you the best of luck. Uh, if you would like any more information about our all-county events, you'll see the link coming up here in a second. So have a great day, and we'll see you at the uh, auditions.